Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today I'm reviewing the Canon RF 24-70 2.8 LIS USM lens. Now I've been using it with the R5 alongside the rest of the Holy Trinity and a few other RF lenses and it's been a really enjoyable lens to use. I have the Nikon 24-70 um, 2.8S as well so I had some idea of the kind of image quality I was expecting and performance, and I have to say in many ways those two lenses are very similar. They both cost around £2,000, they both have an 82mm filter thread, they are both um, within 100 grams of each other, so this is 900 grams, the Nikon is 800 grams, and it's a good lens to use. It's their pro standard zoom for the uh, R-series cameras and it shows. It's well built, weather sealed, dust sealed, has image stabilization built in, which I really like, not something the Nikon has, and overall is a good feeling lens. It mounts well on the R5 and is very well balanced. Like the Nikon, it does zoom and extend a fair bit at the same time, so you 70 millimeters, you do get a fair bit of extension, but it's pretty much what I would expect. It also comes with a fairly shallow um, lens hood, which is what you'd expect, as well as the usual lens caps. In terms of controls, there are a couple of things on this lens I do really like. So you have a lock switch on the side, which locks the zoom ring at 24 millimeters, which is great for when you're traveling and don't want it to extend. Though, to be fair, it does feel fairly solid. It doesn't feel like it extend much by itself, but either way, it is good to have that option. On the um, other side of the lens, you have an autofocus manual switch, which is exactly the same as the 15 to 35, and the stabilization switch, so you can switch that on and off. You then have the zoom ring, as you'd expect, a very smooth uh, focus ring, which is nice. Um, it's fly by wire, so it doesn't actually change anything until you switch the camera on and put it in manual focus mode, but it's good to have that. Um, plus a control ring at the front. The control ring you can uh, customize to set it, for instance, to change your aperture, ISO, um, works really well. And I love Canon's implementation of it. Nikon's is usually on the lens, uh, near the lens mount, and I find that it's too easy to change that by accident, whereas Canon's being on the front and being quite clicky feels very good and is much harder to change. It has a fantastic minimum focus distance of 21 centimeters. It's almost 10 centimeters more than the Nikon edition of a sort of style lens. Um, so that's really good, it means you can get nice and close, which is, I think, really advantageous at 24 millimeters. It means you can get interesting perspectives on some uh, photographs, which you can't get on the Nikon. Image quality wise, this is great. Like there's not much I can add. There's quite a few reviews of this out there, but paired with the R5, looking at the images I got from it, they're just really nice. It's a well-balanced lens, good clarity, not too much distortion. Pretty much what I'd expect from a standard zoom, to be completely honest. One of the things I did like when I was testing and playing around with video um, on the R5 is this seems to have very little focus breathing, which is nice. So when you um, focus on objects close or further away, at the same focal length. The focal length doesn't seem to change when you're focusing, so that's good. The autofocus is also completely silent and very, very fast. Paired with the R5, which is an incredibly capable camera when it comes to autofocus, this is a really nice run and gun style uh, videography solution. So if you do shoot video and you're using the R5, I definitely think you should have this in your bag. I can imagine that at weddings, this is a good choice as well. Of course, if you're an EOS R shooter or R5 or R6 or RP, you do have a bit of a choice, which is you could get this, the 24 to 70, or you could get the 28 to 70 F2. Now, I might make a bit of a short video on those two because I think it's an interesting thing I don't really want to cover in this video, but I really think about what you need and what you're looking for in a lens because if you're a wedding photographer or an events photographer, I'm not sure I'd go with this at £2,000 when you can get the other for £3,000 because I think it might be better, but we'll get into that maybe in a different video. In terms of using it, it's well balanced on the R5. I do think it feels good in the hand and it's a good um, combination. So if I just mount it here, it, it's really well balanced actually. There's not too front heavy even when fully extended, which is nice. So when you're taking photographs, it it just feels good. Equally, with the image stabilization built in, that silent autofocus and the in-body image stabilization on the R5, this is a mean combination for low light photography and low light videography. 
Um, I can happily handhold this down to about one fifth of a second, which is fantastic, getting really good results each time. It's a bit hit and miss at less than that. I managed to get one at half a second that looked good and even at a second, but that might not um, hold up to closer scrutiny beyond myself, but it does feel good and work really well. When you're shooting video, it does also allow you smooth video, even if you don't have a gimbal, which is always nice too. Overall, at £2,000, you can't really go wrong with this because it is just a great all-in-one lens for professional photographers. I do realise that this is a lot of money, and if you don't want to spend as much as this, I think that the 24 to 105 mm f4 RF lens um, is equally very, very good. I had the L version, which I was using with the RP before I moved to Nikon's mirrorless system. And in many ways, the image quality doesn't differ that much to the 24 to 70. Obviously, you don't have that 2.8 aperture though. So if that's important to you, then this is probably gonna be your choice unless you're looking at that F2 lens. So that's what I think of the 24 to 70. I think it's a great lens uh, for the RF mount and I'd be really happy with it if I was using it. I don't really have any gripes about it. It just all works as it should. Um, and yeah, overall really pleased. So I hope you found this short little review useful. If you have any questions about the 24 to 70, do pop them in the comment section below. Hopefully the sample images give you an idea of what this lens is capable of as well. Equally, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Other button works just fine too. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe as it really does help and I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.